welcome you. I want to welcome you to life in the trenches. Bloody miserable life it is too, I'm telling you. We're fighting a lot of things. Not just the Germans over there. We're fighting the weather. Two months ago, this trench was filled with water up to my knees. Can you imagine trying to rest in that? Very difficult, that's for sure. You never know when anything's going to happen that's negative. Sure glad I got some of this British tea here. It's tough. We're fighting the cold, we're fighting the rain, we're fighting the snow, we're fighting the frost, we're fighting the Germans who constantly shell us, maybe at night, in the middle of the night, maybe in the early morning, could be any time of day. When we try to kill them, they try to kill us. Welcome to war. I know there must be some soldiers listening. If you served in the armed forces anywhere today, I salute you. Because many times it's against tyranny that we fight. It's for love of country that we fight. And it's not easy. It's not hard. It's not. In fact, it can be extremely difficult at times. My name really isn't important. Just understand that I'm a private in the British Army. I'm in the nation of France. It's a mess here, to be honest. Oh, I remember the excitement, the emotion that came when England entered the war. I was among the first few hundred thousand that joined up. Yeah, we were going to be at a patriotic adventure, I tell you. We were so excited. And the first few months of fighting were very intense. Unfortunately, we lost a lot. But what happened was that we got dug in. You can imagine a million man army facing a million man army. And it's not just that this is a trench, but back behind me over here, the enemy's over there about 50 yards across no man's land. But back over there about 100 yards is another trench filled with soldiers. And behind them is another trench up to 15 trenches deep. The same is true over here with the Germans. And I think we're going to be here for the rest of the war. It costs a lot to move ahead, even one trench. When I say it costs a lot, I'm talking about a lot of life, a lot of bloodshed. There hasn't been much fighting lately because so many losses were so huge at the beginning of the war that uh, we kind of had to slow down and we kind of just let us wait. Oh, there's shelling and gunfire every single day, I can assure you of that, but it's not an easy fight. I want to tell you that I wasn't really a Christian, a true believer when I signed up. Oh, I'd been to church. Everybody goes to church in England. We all went to church. Uh, I think I was even a shepherd in the parish Christmas play one year. I'd heard about Jesus, but to tell you the truth, I was living my own life, living the way I wanted to live, doing what I wanted to do. I was more interested in adventure than I was in, in following God. But something happened. I'm going to tell you about it in a moment. Carry in this pouch a Bible that my mother gave me. It was my grandfather's. I carry it with me. I didn't really want to at first, but I'm glad now that I did because I read it on occasion. I didn't really believe in miracles. I'd never really seen a miracle until December 24th, 1914. Some amazing things happened that night I'd like to share with you about. That day, Christmas Eve day, began with a huge cold snap. I mean, it got bitter cold, very cold. We sat and we warmed ourselves by the fire and I think on the other side, they were doing the same. It was a beautiful, clear day, and the cold had caused 
all of the, finally, for the mud to freeze. We didn't complain about the cold because we were sick of the mud, okay? But the mud froze hard. We were able to walk on it, and, it, and we felt good about it. We could keep warm. We were dressed for that. We were ready for that. It was a beautiful Christmas Eve day. There was frost everywhere, a beautiful frost. The sun was shining. There was very little shelling that went on that day. And along about nightfall, shelling completely stopped. It grew very quiet. I remember sitting in my trench, drinking some tea. We were talking, we were hoping, we knew that it was Christmas tomorrow, the next day, and we were hoping that the, it would just remain calm, but we didn't trust those Germans, man. We thought for sure they were going to come against us, but we sat, we drank our tea, we hoped that it would just stay like this. Nightfall fell, and some of us went to sleep, and I was one of those who was sitting, sleeping. We always kept our, our, our gun nearby. We always kept our gas mask there nearby. Unfortunately, that was one of the worst parts of the war. Gas. You had to be constantly prepared or they would sh shoot poisonous gas. I'm grateful for this. It saved my life numerous times. This shovel became my best friend as well. I named him Lou. Digging out this trench. But anyway, that was our life, and that Christmas Eve night, I'd fallen asleep. And my friend John said to me, he said, listen, you've got you've to see what the Germans are up to. Man, I woke up with a start. I quickly grabbed my gun. He said, you won't need your gun. You won't need it. I said, are you sure? Can we trust them? He had us look over to see what was going on. I remember cautiously lifting my head up to see what was over. And all along the front line, there was the strangest sight that I'd ever seen. There were little clusters of light formed in a, in a, in a triangle. I looked as far down the, the line as I could to the right and to the left, and all I could see were these little glimmering lights in the Christmas Eve night air. I couldn't figure out what they were. And so I asked my friend, John, what's going on? What is that? He laughed at me and he said, man, those are Christmas trees. Christmas trees? I said, you're kidding. Yeah, they made like little Christmas trees. They put little lights in it, little candles and lanterns, and they made Christmas trees. Strangest sight I've ever seen in war. I remember thinking to myself, man, what do they have up their sleeve? We sat there in amazement watching the lights and then all of a sudden I got to thinking about those Germans you know we wondered about them a lot they were only about 50 yards from us and from time to time we could we could actually hear their voices from time to time if the wind was just right we could hear them talking and and I'm going to tell you something we hated them as much as they hated us just several weeks prior my friend was shot took a sniper's bullet, and he died right in my arms. I remember the anger that I felt. I remember the fury that I felt, the desire to just get revenge. I would kick it out on those people. I was so angry, my friend died. I wondered if they hated us as much as we hated them. It's easy to get bitter and angry during war. Well, that night, the Christmas trees were twinkling. And all of a sudden, we began to hear a sound. I'll never forget the sound of those Germans singing for the very first time. Their sound coming across no man's land and filling our trench. I'll never forget that sound. I didn't recognize the song but discovered later that it was Silent Night, singing in German.
sound. I couldn't believe it. When they got finished, the entire British line stood up and we began to applaud. That was a miracle. British soldiers applauding the German army. And then shortly after that, one of our guys started singing, God rest you merry gentlemen. Oh, the, I think the Germans had us on the singing. They had did better on the harmony, but we had the spirit, we had the heart. And when we finished our carol, they applauded. And then the next thing I know, they returned again with a, a powerful song called, Oh Tannenbaum, Oh Christmas Tree, Oh Christmas Tree. We all applauded one another. And then the most amazing thing happened on the next carol. We started, oh, come all you faithful. And then the amazing thing was they knew it in their language too. And so there we were, English and German harmonizing across no man's land. It was an amazing thing. And I'm going to tell you this, that for me, it was more than amazing. It was supernatural. Because you see, something happened that day. A tangible peace came. It was as though the Prince of Peace had stepped his foot down on the battlefield and said, tonight there's going to be peace. Somehow the anger that had filled my heart left. I was thinking of Mama. I was thinking of that Christmas pudding. I was thinking of all the things I'd experienced as a boy. Got quiet for a moment or two, and then from the other lines, we heard these crazy words. English, come over here. You know shoot, we know shoot. English, come over here. We sat looking at each other like, I don't think so. 